Hello and welcome to PFF Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Ian Hart. It's got a solo edition today, breaking down my top 10 fades at ADP. I cannot stress the second part of this enough. You might see a graphic that says I'm fading Josh Allen. At ADP, I'm fading Josh Allen. I'm fading round two and round three, Josh Allen. If Josh Allen, for some reason, falls into round four, round five, all of a sudden, I am not fading Josh Allen. So I do not believe in a do not draft list. I always believe there is a large enough draft with weird enough rules to make every single player in the NFL fantasy viable. So with that off my chest, my top 10 fades at ADP, starting with The spoiler, I already said it, Josh Allen. My QB1, ADP QB1, the difference is I have him as my 37th player overall. ADP right now, courtesy of Fantasy Pro's consensus data, 24th player overall. I get it. He has a chance to become the first three-time QB1 since freaking Brett Favre. And before him, only Steve Young had done it. Those are potentially, if Josh Allen pulls this off, those will be the only three quarterbacks in NFL history with three consecutive overall QB1 fantasy finishes. But guys, 24th overall, there are far too many target hog wide receivers, three down workhorse running backs available at that point in the draft. Even guys like Kyle Pitts for me to feel comfortable taking Josh Allen there. I think that round six is the sweet spot for these quarterbacks because guys like Kyler Murray and especially Jalen Hurts are routinely falling into that range. So Josh Allen, yes, he's the QB one, but I will not draft any quarterback at the end of round two or early round three. I am much more keen to take one of these tier one guys at the very end of round six another quarterback i'll be fading similar reasons but just doesn't quite have the same upside in my opinion cincinnati Bengals quarterback joe burrow my qb9 qb5 adp right now guys he is going off the board as the 58th overall player and joe burrow hey if they throw the hell out of the ball maybe he does flirt with one of those five thousand five thousand yards 50 touchdown sort of seasons, but he's going to need to because when he doesn't have any sort of rushing upside attached to him at this point, it's just so tough for Burrow to compete with guys like Hurts, like Kyler, even the Mahomes and Herberts of the world. You're just playing a different game with guys like Burrow, Tom Brady, the pocket passers that don't have the same sort of just best case scenario upside. So for me, it's Joe Burrow at pick 58, or I can wait literally 50 picks later and get arbitrage versions like Kirk Cousins, like Derek Carr, even Tom Brady, 30 picks later. I cannot get behind Joe Burrow going ahead of someone like Jalen Hurts. Take the cheaper discount versions rounds later. Round five is still an area where you can be getting some really quality wide receivers. I'd hate to burn that pick on a quarterback like Burrow that again, I think you can just get a discount version of him far later on. Moving on to running back. Cleveland Browns running back Nick Chubb, not someone I've come away with a lot because, guys, he's a 16th player overall, and I actually got to go on uh, my sports update, Ari PFF's Finest, his podcast today, and talking to Ari, Kareem Hunt is not expected to be traded, at least in terms of Ari's, you know, inside sources going on. So with that in mind, Nick Chubb is once again not one but two injuries away from having a featured role. I don't know why. If you want to call Nick Chubb the single best running back alive, I don't think too many people, including myself, are going to be disagreeing with you. With that said, guys, Nick Chubb, 17.5 combined carries and targets per game with Kareem Hunt last year, 17.6 without. Even if Kareem Hunt gets hurt, he's healthy right now, by the way. Even if he gets traded for some reason, even though, again, per sources, he's not expected to be, Dearness Johnson is going to step up into that pass down role. For some reason, they will not feature Nick Chubb on passing downs. I know he's not Hunt. I know he's not Austin Eckler. But, man, can we just get one of the best players in the league, the ball in space, a little bit more often? I don't get it. But Nick Chubb, he needs to be one of the best running backs, if not the best running back in the league, to make up for a workload that is typically reserved for a far lesser player. In 2021, just the RB21 expected PPR points per game. He was 27th in 2020. Now, he's a beast. He returned RB7 and RB11 performances with that. But guys, with Jacoby Brissett under center, there's never been a time for defenses to key more on Nick Chubb. I don't like betting on players in the second round to only win because of talent. Because it's not like we're taking Nick Chubb versus a bunch of players that aren't talented. It's like Nick Chubb with a mediocre workload or Alan freaking Kamara or freaking Aaron Jones with a more fantasy-friendly workload. I will be taking those other running backs. 
also have a pair of running backs from the same team I will be fading next. Both Rashad Penny and Kenneth Walker from the Seattle Seahawks. My RB39 and RB38. The problem is, guys, they're still going off the board as locked in RB3. So in Kenneth Walker's case, with that hernia issue going on, who in the hell knows when he's going to be back? Because if there's one head coach out there that we know will not be giving us good injury information, it is one Pete Carroll. In Rashad Penny's case, it's not like that he's just going to take over this backfield without Walker in the picture. Walker wasn't in the picture last year toward down the stretch. And yeah, Penny had a great five-game stretch. He also only played over 60% of the offensive snaps in two of those games. And they were lucky enough with Russell Wilson really starting to hit his stride at the end of last season. I understand when he initially came back, it was ugly. But by you know the last four weeks, Russ was mostly back to doing Russ things. I don't want to have to gamble on Penny in an offense that could easily be the worst in the entire league behind an offensive line that, yeah, maybe the, maybe the rookies step up, but I'm not exactly expecting it to be good. When PFF ranks it dead last going to the year, I think that's a fair thing to say. And, oh, yeah, he's not going to catch passes because Travis Homer and DJ Dallas are going to continue to take away the fantasy-friendly reception. So for me, the best-case scenario for either of these backs, Penny or Walker, is going to be take down the early downs to be really, really, really freaking good. And then, yeah, that's that's it. Like, Because they're not going to catch passes and they're not going to be in an offense where they're going to be flirting with super high-end touchdown upside. So I will say with the way quarterback movement is, hey, maybe Seattle next year, they are back to being a contender. They find a way to go get someone. Kenneth Walker, if you're in a keeper league, I think is viable. Historically, we have seen day two running backs. Their value spikes in their second season. We saw that with Javante Williams from last year to this year. Not, not 100% hit rate. Obviously, guys like Trey Sermon have proven that. But generally, I think it was over the last five years, the running backs on day two, they see their positional rank go up nine spots from year one to year two. So for me, I don't want Walker or Penny. If they both start to slide, though, give me Walker just for the possibility of getting that nice keeper value. Value. Next fade for me is going to be one more running back. David Montgomery from the Chicago Bears, my RB20 ADP, RB18. It's just this range. Montgomery, and honestly, I'll talk about just the rest of these guys here. It's Montgomery, Antonio Gibson, and Josh Jacobs. These fades I came up with, I would like to say for the record, uh, before this last week of the preseason where we saw Gibson actually work behind Brian Robinson. So I understand that Gibson not really going in the RB dead zone too much anymore. But really, guys, from the end of round four to about round six or round seven, I don't want anything to do with these running backs. I don't think you need to concern yourself with chasing some of these running backs here just because you only got one or two or maybe zero in the early rounds. There are guys like Kareem Hunt, Cordero Patterson, and Chase Edmonds regularly going in round seven or eight that I think you can argue straight up have better potential workloads on their plate than Gibson, Jacobs, and even Dave Montgomery. In Montgomery's case, terrible offense. We're expecting Khalil Herbert to eat into the work a bit. Maybe Montgomery does keep the pass down work, but it's just one of these situations where oh, he's going to have to be pretty damn good because I don't think he's going to get much help from anyone in his offense. And there is a possibility from the beat reporters uh, coming out of training camp that we actually do see Khalil Herbert make this far more of a committee than folks are expecting. In Gibson's case, obviously already being behind Brian Robinson, pretty freaking, freaking far from ideal. Do not be afraid to just let this man slide deep down the board. And then Josh Jacobs, I am treating Las Vegas as basically New England Southwest at this point, expecting three running backs to consistently be involved in Jacobs, Zamir White, and Amir Abdullah. So for me, these guys, mostly on reputation, are continuing to be pushed up into what is essentially the RB dead zone. So no, I don't want these guys... Make a strength, a super strength in this spot, guys. Don't be afraid to take four or five wide receivers inside the first six rounds because we have these outs in the form of Kareem Hunt, Cordero Patterson, and Chase Edmonds going in round seven or eight when I think those guys arguably are better options than these middle RB dead zone talents. At wide receiver, I will be fading Debo Samuel. The only wide receiver I actually have on here because I do think there are a hell of a lot of good options really in the first you know, six, seven rounds and arguably even after that. But in Debo's case, again, it's just about where he's going. 18th player overall off the board in the middle of the second round, wide receiver six. He is my wide receiver 10, someone that I will draft in the third round, eight days of the week, just can't get behind him in round two ahead of some of these just workhorse running backs. And the big thing with Debo, and if you've listened to this podcast, I've brought this stat up a couple of times, but it can't hurt one more. In weeks one through nine, when he was that featured wide receiver, 21.2 PPR points per game. Weeks 10 through the NFC Championship, when he's playing more running back, 20 PPR points per game. Who cares? Difference of one point, right? 
wrong. The expected points cratered 17.1 expected PPR points per game down to 12.7 expected PPR points per game. Think about a running back. Do we care about carries for a running back? Yes, but we'd prefer to have targets. All else equal, we want targets over carries. Now, with someone like Debo, if we could have Debo get 100 targets or 100 targets and 20 carries, obviously we'll take the extra carries. We do not want the carries to replace the targets. Historically, one target has been worth about 2.7 carries in terms of expected fantasy points. So when Debo is out there getting the running back touches, the reason why he was able to keep on keeping on was because he was literally the most efficient running back in the entire NFL in terms of yards per carry, breaking tackles, all that stuff. Just like Nick Chubb, I don't want to have to rely on Debo Samuel being one of the best players in the freaking league in order to meet value because we're not drafting him around scrubs. We're drafting him around a lot of fellow guys with much larger workloads. So Debo Samuel, someone that PFF projects to finish just 25th among wide receivers and total targets this season. I am much happier to, again, get guys like Saquon Barkley, Leonard Fournette, Aaron Jones, Alvin Kamara. The running backs available in round two are just far superior to taking a chance on someone like Debo when I think the wide receivers you're getting in round three, four, even five, you could argue are going to be set up for potentially more targets than Debo Samuel. If there's ever an offense in the NFL, as great as Debo is, that doesn't even need to necessarily feature him a ton. It's probably the offense featuring George Kittle, Trey Lance, Brandon Ayuk. They have other avenues to go with the ball. I'm not saying Debo is going to freaking completely bust and not get his, but we do need to keep in mind, everyone, we want the targets. We do not want those rush attempts to come in place of the targets. That's bad for the fantasy business. Cowboys tight end, Dalton Schultz. He's my tight end six. He's gone off the boards to tight end six. The difference is he's my 86 player overall. ADP 57th player overall for the life of me. I cannot figure out how Dalton Schultz is going closer to George Kittle than he is freaking Dallas Goddard. So with where Schultz is going in round five in round six, I think a similar sentiment can be said about TJ Hawkinson, where at that point in the draft guys, we still have top 30 wide receivers and we have the Kyla Murray's and the Jalen Hurts's of the world. No, I don't really want running back, but I don't want tight ends at this point in the draft either when we can get Dallas Goddard freaking Dawson Knox and Zach Ertz rounds later than these guys. So I would like to make my initial tight end one, one of those three guys at a minimum that I just mentioned uh, between Goddard, Knox, and Zach Ertz. Dalton Schultz is someone that I just don't see enough upside with to be taken significantly ahead of those other guys. Again, tight end six, I get it. Not having Michael Gallup ready to go, only having C.D. Lamb out there. There's a chance that Schultz is going to be flirting with triple digit targets, but I'm just not convinced that he has that higher of a target projection than Goddard. Goddard, Knox, and Ertz, and I would argue that all three of those guys are better talents and they aren't in that much worse uh, situations. And in Knox's case, you can argue it's a better situation. He could also be the number two in Buffalo. Goddard could feasibly be the number two in Philly. Probably not, and you can argue about, you know, Prescott versus Jalen Hurts, and we can give the passing nod to Dak, certainly. But when we, again, bake in just the large discrepancy in ADP, that's where I draw the line. Do not reach on Dalton Schultz. And that is going to wrap up my top 10 fades at ADP ahead of 2022. Just to quickly repeat those guys. Buffalo Bills quarterback, Josh Allen. I am looking to get Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts in round six instead. Cincinnati Bengals quarterback, Joe Burrow. Don't take him in round five. Look for Matthew Stafford, Derek Carr. 50 picks later, potentially, along with Kirk Cousins instead. Cleveland Browns running back, Nick Chubb, 16th player overall. I will be taking guys like Alvin Kamara and Aaron Jones ahead of him. Seattle Seahawks running backs, Rashad Penny and Kenneth Walker. Hey, don't hate the player, hate the ADP. If these guys fall, you know, far enough, okay, fine. I'll take them, particularly Penny with seemingly having a better chance as the Walker injury situation goes. But even as top 90 guys, you know, round seven, round eight, I'm still looking elsewhere more times than not. At wide receiver, Debo Samuel in the middle round two, not someone I'm too keen on. And finally, tight end, Dalton Schultz at tight end six. Cannot get behind that with Goddard, Knox, and Zach Ertz available rounds later. So if you guys enjoyed this, I invite you guys to check out PFF Plus. It's got our entire fantasy football draft guide, updated ranks continuously from myself, Dwayne McFarland, Nathan Yonke, Kevin Cole, the entire PFF fantasy uh just team yeah great stuff from us and we also have our draft now feature where we do our best to basically be by your side throughout your draft no can't ex exactly go in there i'm a busy guy i got a lot of drafts myself i can't draft for you but we come up with the tool that is the next best thing so check out that check that out pff plus you can get a free week trial
Thanks again for tuning in PFF Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Ian Hartz. Until next time, take care, everybody.